Hi there, welcome back to the collegeadvisor.com YouTube channel. My name is Finn. My name is Ramona. You may not recognize me, but I'm still Ramona. And today we're going to be talking about the difference between applying to college um, ED, RD, REA, EA, and any other terms you might have heard in the application process. So for starters, there are two main ways in which you can apply to college, applying early and applying regular. Um, so with regular, there are one to three ways to apply, and with early, there are many, you know, many more. Actually, I think there are only four. Uh, so four ways to apply early. Um, but let's, yeah, let's jump into it. So um, regular decision, or RD, is pretty straightforward, so you'll have a pretty standard deadline. Um, usually this is around January 1st or January 15th. Certain schools will even do um, February, um, but rarely is it earlier or later than that. Um, and you apply, you send in all your materials, and you will receive a decision around April, um, oftentimes. Um, and so this is like often considered the like normal way to apply to most colleges. And so like this will be the way in which you, you know, apply to the majority of colleges that you apply to is regular, um, as the name would suggest. Early deadlines, on the other hand, are, as the name suggests, early and like i say early but like they're really early so the first early deadline tends to be around like november 1st to november 15th and i can hear you at home thinking oh it's november this is not early at all right it's now august when this video is being uploaded that is two months that is the month of September, the one you're already in and the month of october the one you're already in and then it's november 1st so when we say early, we mean early, right? Um, the other thing with early though, is that you hear back earlier, right? So for regular, you hear back around April, um, but for early, you're gonna hear back around early to mid-December, mm -hmm. um, which can be really helpful when you're applying then regular again. Um, so there are a few different types of uh, early applications. Um, these go by a series of acronyms, except for rolling. First you have EA or early action. Next, very similar to EA, you have ED, early decision. Then you have REA, um, also sometimes called SCEA for restrictive early action or single choice early action. Um, they aren't quite the same thing, but they're basically the same thing. Um, and then finally, uh, rolling, um, which is kind of like the black sheep out of the four. Um, but uh, what is early decision? <laughs> so what is ED? So like Finn said, with early decision, you're going to have that early deadline in November, but the difference between EA and ED, so that's early action, early decision, um, is this factor called binding. So early decision or ED is binding, meaning that if you apply at the early decision deadline to a college and you get into that college, you have to go there. Um, that's it. Binding just means that you are bound to attend that college. If you apply, you get in and you go there. Um, so there's also colleges with ED1 and ED2. So ED1 deadlines will be the same as any early deadline um, that November 1st, but early decision two deadlines are typically along with regular decision deadlines. So you can either, for instance, like I think U Chicago has ED2, but they're like regular decision and ED2 deadlines were both in January when I was applying, um, but the difference would be that if you apply regular to U Chicago, it's not binding, but if you apply ED2, it would be binding. Um, and you might be like, oh, like why would I apply ED2 instead of ED1? Like what's the difference, yada yada? Well, the ED2 deadline is after you find out um, whether you got an early or early decision to another college. So say like you had your top, top, top choice and you applied to that early, but you got rejected and you have the second choice that happens to have an ED2 deadline, then you can still like have that same level of commitment by applying like early decision yeah. to, to this college, but it would still be binding. Um, and some colleges you find out like in February or March, like before they release their regular decision. Um, but that's just something to keep in mind. Some schools don't have ED2, but some do. So in case you heard about it, I'm just gonna throw that out there. Um, so that's early decision. Just remember um, what I said about it being binding, um, but there is a difference between early decision and early action. So I'm gonna pass it to Finn for um, ED versus EA, and you're gonna pick it up. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So with early action or EA, um, it's very, very similar to early decision. Um, so you still have an early 
you still have an early deadline, November 1st, all that jazz. Um, and in that sense, it's going to feel very, very similar to, to ED. However, if you get into a school early action, you are not required to attend. It's non-binding. So you could get into a school that you really like, EA, and then you could be like, okay, awesome, I have this in my back pocket, right? You don't have to decide until May or whatever the school's like decision date is. Um, and then you can choose like after that to go and apply to some other schools if that's what you'd want to do. Um, so that can be better for students who like aren't as like sold on one school or like really, really, really into one school and, and want to go there no matter what, but still want to have, you know, the boost of applying early. Um, yeah, like the boost, which we'll talk about later on in the video. Yeah, later in the video. But also like for, for instance, I think Finn has, Finn can relate to this because you applied to Harvard early and you got in, so you weren't bound to go, but you still had the freedom to apply to like Yale or whatever. Exactly, yeah. So I applied to Yale, but the thing about Harvard is that they do something known as restrictive early action. Um, so for restrictive early action, it's very similar to early action, right? You apply early and you are not bound to go, so you can apply to other schools later on, but they restrict you so that you're only allowed to apply to one school early. Um, so Harvard is restrictive early action, um, and that means that you can't apply to any other schools early, asterisk. Um, and this is where the difference between restrictive early action and single choice early action kind of comes into play. So for Harvard, it's restrictive early action. You can't apply to any other uh, private schools early, but you can still apply to public schools early. Um, so Harvard is trying to you know, prevent you from applying to like Stanford and Yale and Princeton and Dartmouth, you know, all of these schools um, in it early in addition to applying to Harvard. Um, but for some students, like maybe they don't want to restrict them from applying to University of Michigan, for example. Um, whereas other schools like Stanford are single choice early action, which means that you're only allowed to apply to Stanford. You can't apply anywhere else, um, public or private, no other programs, just Stanford's. Um, but in the case of restrictive early action and single choice early action, if you get into either of those programs, you are not bound to attend. So uh, now that we've kind of explained the difference for all these early deadlines, um, we're going to jump to a really quick frequently asked questions bit. Um, so we're just going to fire them off. So the first one, can I apply early decision and early action at the same time? Yes, you can, but if you get into your ED school, you have to refuse any other offers from an early action school. Okay, so second question, can I apply EA and EA at the same time? Yes, you can. There are no restrictions on EA. You can apply to as many colleges EA as you want as long as they're all EA. Um, okay, can I apply EA and REA at the same time? Ostensibly, no. <laughs> Although it depends on whether REA allows you to apply to public schools or not, which honestly at this point, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> but you might be able to apply EA to another public school and REA to whatever school is REA. But in general, you should look at REA and say, if I'm applying REA, I'm probably not allowed to apply mm -hmm. anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So the answer to this question is, Probably no, but check probably no, but double check. Bad. Yeah, but double check. Exactly. But yeah, yeah, it's like 99% of the time it's gonna be like you can't eat you can't REA and EA at the same time because like those colleges have like the policies of like this is your one choice. But like Vince said, it's like weird to public university. So honestly, if you're confused, it's better to play it safe than sorry. Just email the admissions office and say, hey, like I'm really considering applying to Harvard early. Can I also apply to my local state university early at the same time? Um, because it could be special circumstances. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Emailing the admissions office is is um, one of the best hacks. Like, great. Um, okay, so next question, kind of similar, but can I apply ED and REA or SEEA at the same time? So similar to the last answer, uh, a solid maybe, but probably not. Check um, with your school um, and their admissions office to like, figure out exactly what those circumstances are. Um, however, if you do get in ED and you end up applying ED and REA at the same time, um, you will be, you're like obligated to, to attend the ED school. 
Um, generally, this is a combination that I would really caution a student against doing. Um, because ED is restrictive in certain ways, and REA or SEA are is like restrictive in, in a certain way. So generally, erring on the side of unrestrictive, unless you really know what you want, is is like the safe way to go. Um, okay, second to last question: Can I apply ED and ED at the same time? No, you cannot. Um, so both of these are binding, so if in the case you were to get into both ED schools, you would be obligated to attend two different programs, which would be a little bit difficult. Um, so therefore, you cannot apply to two ED schools at the same time. Um, okay, final question. Can I apply to EA or ED1 and ED2 within the same admission cycle? Yes, you can. However, it all of that works on the assumption that you were rejected by the first school that you applied to. Um, so if you're applying ED1 and you get in, you're bound to attend that um, school no matter what, so you would not be able to apply ED2. If you get into a school EA, although you're not bound to attend that, chances are if you apply to it EA, you'd prefer it over any school that you'd be applying to ED2 for. So technically, you could get in EA and then apply somewhere ED2, but you wouldn't. Um, <laughs> but wouldn't. if you don't get into your EA program and you don't get into your ED1 program, then you can apply ED2 within the same cycle and there are no problems. Um, the thing to know is that EA slash ED1 and ED2 do not take place at the same time. Um, so the ED2 will take place at the time when the regular decisions happen, uh, whereas ED1 and EA will take place earlier in November. Finally, let's talk about some reasons why people would want to apply early and some reasons why you might not want to apply early. I'll pass it to Mona. Okay, yes, so what are some reasons why you would want to apply earlier? Well, um, from a statistical standpoint, applying early means that there is a smaller application pool, which typically people would think would be less competition. Um, so for example, for the class of 2025 at the University of Pennsylvania or UPenn, about 8,000 students applied early decision and 1.2 thousand students. 1,200, I'm not a step person, 1,200 students were accepted from that pool. That's 50% of the class of 2025 was accepted early. Um, and if you compare that to regular decisions, 56,000 people applied to UPenn during the regular decision cycle. And from that, only about 1,500 were accepted from 56,000 versus 1,500 being accepted from 8,000. So just from a purely statistic, statistic statistical standpoint that's why someone would apply early um but not only are your chances better like purely from the objective math standpoint um but applying early decision especially just demonstrates how committed you are to that college because it's binding you're like yes i understand if i get in i need to go that's how much i care about this college that's how committed i am that's how much interest you're demonstrating um if you remember our little video on demonstrated interest and like expressing how interested you are in a college um, because you chose this school over everything else. You are so committed to going there that you risked everything and applied early. Um, and oh, in addition to that, with early deadlines, it's also just nicer to find out in December rather than April. Um, and also like take off your whole winter break not worrying about writing your essays. But that's typically like one of the big factors in applying early decision. Um, and with early action, um, I, for me, like, since it's not binding, I would say, like, I would just apply early action if there were schools that would let me do so, and I could find that earlier, just to have that kind of, like, whew, like, I've been accepted somewhere type of vibe going on. Um, but then there are also some cons to applying early, which I will pass to Finn. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, there, yeah, there's, as Mona said, there's some reasons why you wouldn't want to apply early. Most of these apply to, like, applying early decision or, you know, applying in, in some kind of scenario where it's binding, um, right? You generally aren't losing anything when you're applying early action, whether that be regular early action, like, boring early action, restrictive early action, single choice early action. But um, in applying regular or early decision, um, it's binding and bind like they take that very, very seriously. So in general, you really cannot get out of that agreement if you do renege on 
um your promise to attend that school, like if they blacklist your high school and a bunch of other colleges will not accept you, it's like a whole dramatic thing unless there are certain specific like you know special circumstances um but um you know if you are not dead set on like your dream school if you don't know exactly what what you where you want to go um early decision can actually be really really restrictive right it can you know pigeonhole you into one school and not give you the liberty of um, some of the choice that you you might otherwise have. I withdrew early, but it was special circumstances, so like go check out the other video where I talked about it. Um, but another factor for just why you might want to apply regular decision is like in addition to comparing colleges, you also can compare the financial aid packages. So like, so let's say you get an early decision, it's binding, you have to go. Because it's binding, typically financial aid offices are less lenient in like giving you financial aid if you request it since they're like, well, you're coming here anyways. Like why would we try to entice you with like giving you more money? Versus like if you had gotten into that college, like regular decision and you could show them like another package that was better, they would match it. Um, so my story for this is like, I applied ED yeah. to UPenn, I got in, I was like, hey, give me more money. And they're like, mm, we really can't. And so I had to withdraw, which is like special circumstances. Again, talk to like whoever your admissions officer is. But I am like 100% confident that if I had gotten into UPenn regular decision and I had showed them packages from like other colleges that were more generous, they would have matched it a lot better. Um, because that's like another way to like haggle your financial aid is you can always ask colleges to match a package especially if they're within like the same, like the IVs will match packages because they're all like in the same like tier of whatever school. Um, so that's just another reason why you might not want to apply early. And with schools like the IVs, goodness knows they have the money to do it as well. Like they really do, they really do. These schools have a, a lot of money. So, um, you know, anything you can do to, to, to you know, use the resources that are given to you, um, you should absolutely take. Quickly, Finn, before we close out this video, do you want to talk about what rolling is? Rolling, rolling. So rolling is is kind of special, right? Rolling doesn't exist kind of within the, the realm of, of many of the other systems um, that we talked about. Um, and so a rolling system will differ from school to school to school. So you may want to look at some examples of schools that have um, rolling admissions. So with rolling, uh, generally they'll open the application period at a certain point. Maybe this is November 1st, maybe this is like all the way in August um, or around September. It really varies from school to school. And then within that, you are allowed to apply any time until it closes. Um, so often the official close date is May 1st. Um, however, what they can say is like the the they will close the application once they run out of slots in their freshman class. Usually these these classes will fill up around March or April, but they're a great option if like you get, if you are rejected by all of your early schools and all of your regular schools, which rarely happens, but sometimes it does. And that can be really hard for someone. Um, that can be really unlucky. Um, so rolling schools in those kinds of scenarios can be really, really, really wonderful backup options so that students um, you know can still go to a college that they're excited about but they don't have to like conform to these rigid like application structures would you say like if a role if a school with rolling admissions is your first choice you would just apply as early as possible to make sure like they yeah. don't fill up apply yeah. as early as possible apply as early as possible so long as you feel confident right so if you're applying and you know that in a month you're gonna do a really amazing achievement that's gonna look wonderful for your college applications wait until that month is over, like do the thing and like get it on the resume and be able to talk about it and, you know, assimilate that into your, your college admissions um, profile. But, you know, so while barring any special circumstance like that, go ahead and just apply. You know, if you're excited about the school, apply. And moreover, if you're applying really early in the year and you get in and you're like, okay, I'm happy, I'm done, you know, that gives you an opportunity to just kind of like relax for your last, you know, six to eight months of high school, um, which really is a luxury. Which is um, such a luxury, like, yeah. Know, not that many students get. 100%, 100%. So take advantage of it if you can, if you're, if you're interested in those schools. <laughs> Thank you so much for making it to the end. We're here to stay, so subscribe, 
get comfy, and come vibe with us. If you have any questions, please leave them down below, and Finn and I will do our best to answer them in the next video or respond to your comments since we do read all the comments. Um, and we also have a series of free webinars and blogs related to applying to college that you can also check out in the description box below. And finally, do not forget to follow us on Instagram and TikTok for more exclusive updates. Also, while I have you here, please check out the free College Advisor app at app.collegeadvisor.com that helps you keep track of all your deadlines. Bye! Bye! <laughs>